In this screencast, I want to talk about a toy problem, but one that illustrates an important concept in dynamic programming. Namely, when the function you're trying to maximize or minimize involves more than one argument. It, so this screencast assumes that you've already familiar with dynamic programming or that you've watched the screencast I put out um, that's an introduction to dynamic programming. It's important that you have some background other because I'm going to go through the uh, example relatively quickly just illustrating the important points for when you have a dynamic programming problem that requires more than one argument. So the problem we're going to look at is coin collecting in a grid and it's relatively simple I think to try to explain. You have a grid and in the positions on the grid, the cells in the grid, some of the cells contain a coin. And you have a ro robot here in the upper left-hand corner. And the goal of the robot is to move from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner and pick up as many coins as it can. Now, there's some constraints, though. The robot can only move down one square or to the right one square. So a allowed path would be for the robot to just go straight down one square at a time till it gets to this position 5-1 pick up the coin there, and then go to the right uh, all the way over to the lower right-hand corner. In that path, obviously the robot will pick up two coins, one at position 5-1 and one position 5-5. There are many other paths. In fact, this grows exponentially in the size of the board. But here's another simple path where you just the robot just goes right and then down. That would pick up three coins. The robot can, could go this way, right, down, right, down, 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 right, right, over, and would pick up three coins. So what we want to do is find, like I said, to find the path that allows the robot to pick up the most coins. So as you recall, our goal, the first step in trying to apply dynamic programming, is to come up with a recurrence relation that reflects the optimal substructure that hopefully is in the problem. So what we're looking for is to determine whether there's an optical, optimal substructure to the problem, namely, can, does the larger problem contain the solution to a smaller problem? And second of all, write a recurrence relationship for that. So here, we'll begin, we'll pretend the robot's down in this last position, the cell 5-6, and there, if you recall, there's no coin there, so he didn't pick up a coin when he got there. But what, how could you ask yourself, how can the robot have ended up there? Well, the robot could have come down from cell 4, 6, or it could have come from the left from cell 5, 5. That's the only way the robot could have gotten there in one step. So the question is, now can we come up with an expression for the value, we'll call it f, We'll let f be the maximum number of coins the robot can collect getting to cell ij. So f of 5, 6 would be the maximum number of coins the robot would have here. And now can we come up with an expression, particularly a recurrence relation, that says what the number of coins here the robot could have collected is the optimal number in terms of the optimal number here and the optimal number here. So stop pause the video and think about if you can come up with a recurrence relation just for this one cell. In other words, what, do, what is f of 5, 6 going to look like? So hopefully you gave that a try. And now let's just think about how that thought experiment might have gone. You know that the robot had to come from 5, 5, or 4, 6. And you know that the total in each of those cells must have been optimal. Otherwise, just like in other applications of dynamic programming, uh, the optimal substructure says, uh, otherwise the robot could have gone a different way and gotten more coins, thus changing the solution to the overall problem. So you know that 5, 6 either has, the f of 5, 6 either has to come from f of 5, 5 or f of 4, 6. And in fact, it has to be the max of those two because there was no coin in 5, 6. But if there had been a coin in 5, 6, then the robot would have picked it up. So we would have to add the one, one to whatever value we got from 5, 5 
of 4, 6. In this case, case, then we get the recurrence relation. Again, we have max of f5, 5, and f of 4, 6, but now we add the 1 because of the additional coin. So now take a minute and try to think about how you would, what the recurrence relation would look like for any cell ij. So in other words, what would f of i comma j be equal to in terms of a recurrence relation? So hopefully uh, you applied the same reasoning to the general cell ij, and so what you get is the max of f go back one row, okay, so this is coming from above, and then go back one column, this is coming from the left. And then add whether or not a 1 if there's a coin in the ij position or a 0 if not. Okay, so if we have this recurrence relation, now we want to fill in the table. So the first order of business is we would like to just be able to write a clean uh, conditional on the loops um, to fill in the table. So what we do is we initialize a base case and we initialize the entire top row, okay, where i is equal to 0, and we get each one of those to 0, and the first column. I mean, obviously the robot can't pick up any coins because there's really no um, coins on the board. There is no board, so in fact there's no coins on the board. So before we write down the algorithm in detail, let's um, go through and fill in parts of this table. So we've got the top row initialized to 0, the left column initialized to 0, so we take our max here, we apply it to this position, 1, 1, and we see that both um, up, the up direction has a 0 and the left direction has a 0. And there was no coin in this position, so we get a 0. Then we move across if we do it row-wise, and again, these are both 0, no coin in the position, so we move ahead. Um, we get to this one, again, both zeros, no coin in the position, I think that's there. We add one, and we get a two, and we just keep moving across. Okay, so now, you might fill, try filling in the rest of the table, hopefully it'll match up, and then try to write down what the nested loops look, need to look like in order to be able to fill in the table. So, as you've probably figured out, we have, we initialize the first row, or the zeroth uh, column, I should say, um, with zeros. Then the first row, we initialize with zeros. And then here's where, of course, all the work gets done. Um, we loop over the rows, then we loop over the columns inside in a nested loop, and then we just apply our recurrence relation, and that's all there is to it. Um, of course, this this is some access to some array that contains the uh, whether the coins, which cells actually contain the coins. So this will fill in the table. You can see how easy that is. And then a little trickier is the trace back through the table to find the path the robot will take. So here um, you need uh, a while loop, and basically what you want to do is you're going to work back. So you're going to initialize i to be equal to uh, the number of rows, and j to be equal to the number of columns. Then you're going to work your way back um, and check to see where you came from. And if you came from the left, this should be left, then you're going to store that on the stack. Okay, so remember this This is because this is one less column, that means you're coming from the left. In other words, you got this by coming from the left, and you're going to store that information on the stack. Otherwise, there's only two options. You must have come from above, so you'll store that on the stack. Um, now, you need to be careful, because as you're working your way back, you might go, well, it's a little hard for this one, but you might go this way, for instance. like that, and then potentially, depending on how you've written your code, you may end up here or here, and so you need to make sure that you trace back to there. 
Notice it doesn't matter how you, when you start, when the robot starts here, it doesn't, to get this first coin here, it doesn't matter whether it goes that way in there or that way in there. Okay. So what's the performance of our algorithm? Well, filling the table obviously is going to take the, the cells we have to fill in are the number of rows times the number of columns. And filling in each cell is just taking the max of two numbers and then adding a number. Up. So there's not a lot going on there. Each cell is a constant time. So the filling in the table is going to be theta of the number of rows times the number of columns. And then tracing back, it's just going to be the number of rows plus the number of columns. So here, if the number of rows and the number of columns, say, are both n, this is theta of n squared, so it's going to be quadratic. Tracing back is only going to be linear. So the, the time, the dominant amount of time, is going to be spent in filling in the table. That won't always be true, um, and we'll explore that in later screencasts.